All right, so today we're going to be talking a little bit more about mathematics and art, and in particular we're going to be talking about symmetry. So, um, symmetry is what comes to mind a lot of times when people think about math and art. In symmetry, what it means essentially is that we're going to have these same measurements across uh, some, some shift or some change uh, with mathematical art. Symmetry comes from this idea that if we take an image like this, and we move it around or do something to it, we end up getting the same thing back. Well, it turns out that we talk about symmetry using what's called rigid motion. So rigid motion is the idea that we're going to take an image and we're going to move it in some way without changing the image. So rigid motion, by definition, it's rigid and then it doesn't change and it's motion, it's actually moving. So what is rigid motion? Rigid motion is a movement of an image without changing its size or shape. There are four basic examples for rigid motion that we're going to talk about today. The four examples are, I could take an image and I could simply move it the same direction and the same distance, so all the points on this image of this uh, smiley face are going to move the same direction and the same distance, and this is what we call a translation. A translation, this is one example of a rigid motion. To translate means we're going to move everything in the image the same distance in the same direction. So what else could we do? Well, we could translate, we could rotate. Rotation, I could just rotate a certain angle, and that rotation about some center, so if the center is right here and I'm rotating about that point, then I'm doing a rotation, which is an example of rigid motion. The shape and the size did not change, so rotation is an example. That point is called the center of rotation. I can also reflect. Reflect means that I pick some line that I'm going to kind of flip over. So, for instance, if I pick this line right here that's going straight through the smiley face, and I flip it over that line, that would be an example of reflection. I can also reflect over this line, this horizontal line. That would be an example of a reflection. Or I can flip over some other line, some line that's not even on this necessary page. I can flip over this line. And if I do that, flip over that imaginary line, I end up getting something that looks kind of like that. So reflecting means you're kind of like flipping over a particular line. And that line is called the line of reflection. And a lot of people think that this is like mirror images. So if I'm flipping over that line, it's like I'm seeing myself in the mirror. And then lastly, if I put two of these together, like the translation and the reflection, if I translate and then reflect, it's what we call a glide reflection. So for a glide reflection, you're going to glide or translate and then reflect. So if I translate like this, and then I reflect over that line that's kind of telling me where to translate, I get a glide reflection. When we talk about symmetry, we use rigid motions to talk about symmetry. And the reason why is because in some situations, I end up getting the same image back. And that's what symmetry essentially is. Symmetry is if I take a rigid motion and get the exact same image back. The two that we really care about, the two that are really going to show up in terms of symmetry, are rotation, we have rotational symmetry, and reflection, reflectional symmetry.
Now, technically, you could have translational symmetry, and you can have wide reflection symmetry. When you think about things like wallpaper, where the pattern repeats itself, but we're not going to worry too much about that today. We're just going to talk about rotational symmetry and reflectional symmetry. So, in this example, the smiley face, if I take a rotation of the smiley face, the only time it's ever going to go back to where it started is when I get all the way around or go a full 360 degrees. So in this particular example, we wouldn't really call this rotationally symmetric because the smiley face isn't rotating back to the same exact image until we get to 360 degrees. On the other hand, if I take a reflection, so if I reflect over the vertical axes, then I end up getting the exact same smiley face back. And so what I see is there is a line of symmetry that runs right through this smiley face, giving me reflectional symmetry. So in this image, this is an example of an image which has reflectional symmetry, but no rotational symmetry. So again, symmetry is having a rigid motion that per preserves the image. And so when we talk about symmetry, we will talk about the rotational or reflectional symmetry that it has by telling us where the center of rotation is, what angles of rotation there are, and then what the lines of reflectional symmetry are. So symmetry is a rigid motion that preserves the image. So again, in this example of the smiley face, this has reflectional symmetry because over this line, if I fold it or flip it, I end up getting the exact same image back. So it's reflectional symmetry. So reflectional symmetry works out pretty nice. This has no rotational symmetry. So we don't even have to mention it. There are other things that we could draw that might have some type of rotational symmetry. So let me grab a marker real quick, grab another piece of paper. So for example, suppose that I drew something like this. So this has some type of rotational symmetry. And the rotational symmetry comes out of the idea that rotating at about this point, I could rotate it to about right here, and I get the same image back. Or I could rotate it to about right here, and I get the same image back. Or I can rotate it back to where it started, and I get the same image back. So this is an example that can rotate a certain angle and get the exact same image back, preserve the image. So for example, this one, where I get something that looks like this, has rotational symmetry, and the angle that I'm rotating it before I get it back is about 120 degrees each time. So this has rotational symmetry, because when I take that rigid motion of rotation of 120 degrees about this center, I end up getting the image back. So rotational symmetry at 120 degrees. If I go another 120 degrees, I get 240 degrees, and I get the same image back. So 240 degrees. And lastly, if I get back to 360 degrees, I get the exact same image back. So 360 degrees. This does not have reflectional symmetry, though, because when I reflect it, it ends up, what ends up happening is, and we can kind of draw the, the other image on the other side, I end up having something that looks like this. Now notice that's not the same image, because this one has the, it's kind of like this wing part going clockwise as I go in, whereas this one has counterclockwise. So that re reflectional symmetry doesn't actually show up in this particular instance. There's no line of reflection that I can actually make this work. But it does have rotational symmetry at 120 degrees, 240 degrees, and 360 degrees. There are other images as well that will have symmetry. So suppose that I start with a rectangle. This rectangle, it does have symmetry of the refractional type. So if I draw out this rectangle, notice that if I take this rectangle and I flip it over it, vertical line that goes through the center, I get the same rectangle back. And likewise, if I flip it over this horizontal line that goes through the center, I get the same rectangle back. 
So there's a line of reflection here and there's a line of reflection there. In addition, if I take that rectangle and I rotate it 180 degrees, so if I rotate it 180 degrees, I get the same rectangle back, and then I get it 360 degrees. So this is an example that has reflectional symmetry, two lines of reflectional symmetry. And it has rotational symmetry at 180 degrees and 360 degrees. What sometimes could be annoying is writing down all the rotational symmetries. Because it's 120 degrees, this actually kind of indicates the angles that I'm going to end up getting. I get 120 degrees as the first one. But because I get back to where I started, so as I rotate this, because I get back to where I started when I rotated 120 degrees, that means that I can go another 120 degrees because it's the exact same image that it was a second ago. So 120 degrees would make it again the same image. So taking the first angle and adding it to itself, 120 plus 120 will always give me the second angle. And the last angle that I'll hit is 360 because it, it turns one, uh, uh, one percentage or one fraction of turn all the way around and it will eventually go all the way back to where it started at 360 degrees. In other words, this first angle is kind of like the most important. But it's not true if I just say it has rotational symmetry at 120 degrees because these other ones are also in fact important. But when people realize that the first one kind of indicates what the other ones are going to do. So what I was saying before the battery ran out was that uh, when we're looking at symmetry, what we could try to do then inst instead is look at these, this first angle. And this first angle actually tells us everything about the, uh, the uh, rotational symmetry. So one of the ways to describe this then is to kind of count how many angles there are that we have rotational symmetry at. So for this one we have 120, which is 1, 240, which is 2, and 360, which is the 3. So there are three angles of rotational symmetry for this. The order of rotational symmetry is that, it's the count, the number of angles of rotational symmetry that an image has. So the order is the number of angles of rotational symmetry. So for example, this one has order 1, it's only 360 degrees, so this is order 1. That's another way of basically saying it has no rotational symmetry. This one has order 3. And this one has order 2. So really, you could talk about either. If I say that something has rotational symmetry at 120 degrees, 240 degrees, and 360 degrees, I could have also said it has rotational symmetry order 3. If it has 180 and 360, I could have said order 2. If it has no rotational symmetry, I could say order 1. Now you can go back and forth if you want to, and the way that you can go back and forth is say, okay, wait, if it's order 2, then to get that first angle, I just take 360 degrees, the full wrap around, and divide by 2. So 360 divided by 2 gives me 180. If it's order 3, 360 divided by 3 gives me 120. And if it's order 1, 360 divided by 1 gives me 360. So I can kind of go back and forth between the order and the rotational symmetry angles simply by dividing 360 by whatever the order is. Now when we talk about symmetry then, what we're going to be basically looking for is any possible lines of reflectional symmetry and any possible rotational angles of rotational symmetry. And once we figure out those two things, then we pretty much know where the symmetries are for a particular image.